Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hey, sorry I haven't been around posting videos. You know, my full-time business, which is tactical application consulting. Between the training and the seminars, I've just been too busy. Uh, got back from SHOT Show and then flew out to uh, Pennsylvania. Now I'm trying to fight a cold and it's just been shitty. But anyways, uh, last night I was trolling through some of my videos and realized I had done videos on the Bren but really never finished it. So I figured I'd throw something together for you. Tell you a little bit about the baby behind me. I'll throw in a video of me breaking down one for cleaning and then a video of us shooting some. Uh, what you're looking at right here is the Bren Light Machine Gun Mark I. This was used by the Commonwealth Forces during World War II, made its way all the way in active service with the Commonwealth Forces all the way to the Falkland Islands. Um, it's chambered in a 303 British uh, round what you're seeing here is the Mark I. The difference between the Mark I and the Mark II are very slight differences. One of the differences is, is the sight system was changed. They actually incorporated an offset sight onto the receiver and then they changed the rear stock. Other than that, the guns are identical. And what you're seeing it here is in a defensive tripod. This tripod never saw its way over the European campaign. Um, one of the main reasons is, is it's a defensive position when you have a tripod like this. Uh, the Canadian forces went over to England to defend England from invasion of Germany, which never happened, but that's when you would see this configuration. But well, once the Commonwealth forces landed in Normandy, well, they were on the offense. So they were trying to work their way into Germany. So you really wouldn't want to carry this bad boy around. It's, <laughs> it's a heavy piece of shit, so you really don't want to. Uh, very similar to the 1919 Brownings. The, anything that has a tripod, you have a crew that goes with it. And literally minimum is a four-man crew, uh, two are carrying ammo, one's carrying the firearm, and one's carrying the tripod. Uh, so after they landed in Normandy Beach, tripods never made it. They have the bipod up front. Basically the Bren crew was a two-man crew, and that's all they needed. Uh, number two Bren gunner basically carried all the necessities, and number one Bren gunner, he was a trigger man. So anyways, um, like I was saying, I'm going to throw together some uh, little video of me breaking down the Bren, giving a cleaning, and then a really piss poor video of me shooting the Bren, and then you'll see me doing this thing with my fingers. I'm trying to feather the trigger and I look like an idiot, but I'll throw it on board anyways. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the videos, and I'll try to have some more videos soon. Take care. Hey, everyone. I have for you today, for your viewing pleasure, a 1942 dated English Bren light machine gun. This was the primary weapon used by the Commonwealth forces back in World War II. Uh, the Bren, which was usually called the Bren gun, was a series of light machine guns adopted in Britain in the 1930s. And it was used in various roles up until 1991. While this is best known as the British and the Commonwealth Forces' primary infantry light machine gun in World War II, it was also used during the Korean War. It saw service throughout the later half of the 20th century, including in the 1982 Falkland Wars. Hell, it even saw a battle in 1991, the Gulf Wars. Um, although this one here is fitted with a bipod, it was also used on a tripod for defensive. They used that during Britain, during the bombing of Britain, before the Allies actually started to invade Europe. And also it could be vehicle mounted. The, the Bren was a modified version of the Czech design light machine gun, the VZ-26, uh, which the British actually officially adopted this in the 1930s after testing it. Um, it had a very distinctive Kerfbach magazine, which was gravity fed. Um, it had the conical flash hider suppressor up front, quick change barrel, and, you know, it was a very, very, very effective and efficient machine gun. I mean, it really, it definitely carried its weight. Um, later on, they changed calibers. Uh, they actually went to a 7.62 by 5.1 uh, NATO round, um, but, um, you know, it is an unbelievable gun. This particular firearm was also, like I said, it was used by the Commonwealth Forces. So anyone on the British regime at that time, whether it be Canada, Australia, you know, India, and all the rest of the, uh, uh, the Commonwealth Forces, fired a 303 Brit round, same as the Enfield. Now the U.S., what they had was the M1 Garand, which shot a 30-odd-6. Their BAR shot the same round. 
So ammunition was plentiful, but the problem is, is when the two forces combined, it ran into a problem. Now, there are arguments, as you saw in the, the other video, that the, the BAR is a, a beautiful firing firearm. Uh, it does have its drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is it's a 20 round box magazine, where this is a gravity fed 28 round magazine, which obviously gives you a little bit of benefit. It's also gravity fed, very similar to the Japanese Type 99 machine guns. What was also extremely beneficial for this particular firearm that was better than the BAR is the quick change barrels. Under a heavy fire fight, the number one Bren gunner had a number two Bren gunner with him. He carried a spare barrel bag. That spare barrel bag had everything in it needed to keep this gun up and running, included another spare barrel. And basically what would happen is this handle, which was not only for carrying, but what they would do is picture this barrel is smoking hot. All of a sudden they have to change it out. Barrel comes out. New barrel comes into play much as it wants to, locks down, it's good to go. The carry handle was beneficial if you're walking in the woods for changing the barrel without touching the barrel as it's steaming hot, but you could also unlock it. You can bring it down here, lock it into place as a groove on the side of the gas receiver part of the machine gun, and you could carry it and shoot it from the hip. But this gun here, it was, I mean, I've fired, a, you know, Tons of rounds through it, as you see in the video. We've used this as the Black Watch in our reenacting group. It's a semi automatic conversion. It's roughly, you know, if you got a pre band version of this, it's going to be about a thousand, oh my god, $19,000. The version that you're seeing here um, is roughly around $3,000, give or take, depending on how the market is treating it. Um, Masterpiece Arms, I forget the name of the company that does this one. Uh, Historic Arms out of Franklin, Georgia. This is number 24. Side charging handle, two versions. The Mark I version and the Mark II versions. Um, there was some barrel design changes. There was a sight change between the Mark I and the Mark II. The charging handle changed also. So it's, you know, it's really great. So what we're going to do real quickly, so I don't eat up too much time, is... Uh, after the shoot, I get lucky enough to break this down and clean it. So, first off, let's... It's clear. Nothing in it. To release the tension on the spring. It has a push pin located here in the back. Basically, very similar to an AR design. Pull the push pin out. Trigger mechanism, I mean, it comes completely out. The trigger mechanism... Recoil guide rod, recoil spring, trigger mechanism is complete. This has been modified. The original version would have extended all the way under the gas system, and that is the ones that are the full auto. This is a modified semi-automatic version. The selector switch has been modified. Um, also, one of the other changes between the Mark I and the Mark II is the Mark I had a high hump on it, um, which gave it a little bit easier for the cheek rest. This mounting piece right here is if you're going to mount it on a tripod. So, having pulled that out, this is the striker block. The striker block is exactly what it's meant to do. It strikes the firing pin, which causes the fire on the fire. What we're going to do now is I'm going to spin and take that tripod off, turn the gun upside down, and I'm going to pull out the gas piston and the bolt assembly. Now, as you can see, the way that the gas piston bolt assembly rocks is it rides on a railing system here. This is also been slightly modified from a semi-automatic, I mean from a full automatic version. Um, it's not as simple as you'd think. There's a lot of reconstruction for this particular gun. But the gas piston system here, we were shooting corrosive ammo through it just one day. You can see that the gas piston is starting to get a little corrosive. It's a very durable, very well built piece of equipment. Um, and you can still find parts and accessories for this if you want. If you happen to own a Bren, they're out there. But keep in mind, if you have a semi-automatic version, there's going to be, have to be slight modifications. There's modifications on the firing pin itself. There's modifications on the trigger mechanism. And we'll turn it upside down here. And what also, this also has a really unique cover plate here. And the cover plate basically protects the gas piston system and it rides with the gun. So the gas system chamber here is also well protected and cleaned off. 
So I'm not going to bore you with me cleaning this thing and throwing it back together again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go clean it, and then we'll get back into an assembly, and then we're done with a clean gun. I know what I fired that before. All right, Blue Rock. It's pretty good. <laughs> oh, Paul, you're going a little hot. I'm sure when I fired those before. Some... It was skipping a couple of times. I'm yeah. sure when I fired those before. You won't be able I to shoot that. I can see right down the sight. Yeah. <laughs> you should be able to get that. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Heads up. Yours. Clear. Yep. I couldn't see it. I was just watching, trying to watch the shot. When you're ready. Let's go. 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 Robbie, need to do your signature. Wow. 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 That round bounced back and got me in the forearm. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs>